From sheep with horns spiraling into their face to snakes eating themselves, here are eight animals with body parts that can kill them. Number eight, turtle shell. Nature isn't always very nurturing, as evidenced by poor animals who can suffer severe injuries or even death due to their own body parts, like our turtle friends. Let's dispel one common myth about our armored reptilian friends from the get-go, that they can leave their shell for another. This is not true. The turtle's shell is actually made up of bone and is part of the turtle's spine. In other words, it's part of their skeletons. Those who take pleasure in trying to remove a turtle's shell just to see what happens are just cruel. When a turtle's shell is being removed, it's equivalent to the human spine being forcibly ripped out. The turtle's shell is made of two parts, the carapace, the top, and the plastron, which is the bottom. These two sides are fused together on each side that is what is usually called a bridge. The function of the shell is obvious. It protects these harmless creatures from the many dangers of the world, but it can, unfortunately, also be the cause of their suffering or their demise. If damaged or broken, the shell can render the turtle vulnerable to all kinds of infections, bacteria, and other predators. These guys are resilient creatures, but a broken, cracked, or a defective shell can spell deadly outcomes for turtles. Although this problem may be fixed through quick veterinarian intervention, most of these slow-moving cuties won't be able to get that kind of help when they need it. Another problem with the turtle shell is something I've often wondered about. What's likely to happen if a turtle finds itself in a helpless position on its back? The answer is that a turtle can, in some instances, turn itself over again, although that requires a lot of effort. The rounder the turtle's shell, the more likely it is for it to turn over, which is more difficult if a turtle is large or sick. If a turtle stays on its back, it can die of sun exposure, dehydration, starvation, or other animals thinking it's a snack. Why do I want to cry right now? Number seven, sheep wool. You might be thinking, sheep wool? Potentially deadly? Really? How does that work? Isn't that wool part of their furry, fluffy charm? As it turns out, unlike most animals, sheep are not able to shed and must be regularly shorn. Shearing is an essential practice for maintaining their health and hygiene, since a number of problems can occur if a sheep isn't shorn for a prolonged period of time. First, excessive wool on a sheep can interfere with the sheep's ability to regulate its body temperature, which can lead to overheating and possibly death for the animal. Second, urine, feces, and other toxic substances can get stuck in the wool, attracting flies, maggots, and other pests, which can lead to severe irritation and infections. And third, too much wool on a sheep's body can leave the animal less able to move properly and avoid potential problems and obstacles, such as predatory attacks. This problem of excess wool on a sheep's body is perfectly exemplified by Chris. Who is Chris, you might ask? Chris is a sheep found by an Australian hiker just outside Canberra back in 2015. What seemed like an otherworldly cotton ball turned out to be a sheep, later named Chris, with such oversized, overgrown wool that the hiker felt almost startled. He notified the authorities. Apparently, Chris had wandered away from his flock five or six years earlier, and his wool grew to astounding proportions. Many agreed that it was a minor miracle that Chris even survived that long. This example of Chris clearly shows how something seemingly innocent, such as fluffy wool, you would gladly just pet, can easily become dangerous and deadly. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number six, honeybee stingers. Being stung by a bee is a drag and more than just being annoying, it's unsettling and it hurts. Trust me, it's very unsettling for the honeybee as well. And I'm going to tell you why. The honeybee possesses a double barb stinger that it sticks in its often unsuspecting victim. This double barb stinger is connected to the bee's abdomen. So when it's pulled away, not only are the honeybee's stingers removed, but also its muscles, nerves, and parts of its digestive tract. Does that sound like a pleasant experience to you? 
And just when you think that they're just annoying, now you're feeling a little guilty for not getting the bee's perspective. There is a very fancy term for this process. It's called autotomy. Autotomy refers to a behavior employed by some animals that consists of something similar to self-amputation, where the animal sheds or discards one or more of its appendages in order to be able to escape a predator or the wrath of their victims, in the case of the honeybees. They are prone to this practically suicidal behavior more than some other insects that sting or annoy us, probably because they are evolutionarily predisposed to forming closer bonds with their hives and its members. So it can even be said that their acts of self-sacrifice for their hives are actually worth some respect. Not many people are prepared for that kind of selfless behavior, that's for sure. Number five, deer antlers. Deer often induce a sense of tenderness with their big, wide-eyed stare, but they are anything but tender with their antlers. These antlers can look really scary. It's believed in the scientific circles that deer antlers are some of the fastest growing structures in nature. They grow up to an inch a day and usually start growing in the spring and continue gaining size up to late summer. These antlers serve more than just one purpose. Sure, deer use them for protection from potential predators, but they also use them to knock fruit off the trees, dig depressions in the ground, in which they like rolling around in dirt and mud to cool down, relax, and repel insects. One of the primary ways deers use their antlers is to engage in competitive behaviors with other males for mating rights with their female counterparts and to demonstrate a dominance in areas where food sources are available. This is where it gets tricky for them. When male deer compete using their antlers, they can often get stuck and interlocked with the other deer's antlers, which can sometimes prove to be fatal. They may get so stuck that they can't move for prolonged periods of time, and it can even happen that they starve to death stuck in that awkward position. Numerous instances of this phenomenon have been documented and recorded, and sometimes people even help them to disentangle and move on with their merry lives. In other words, the very tool that helps them create a dominant and formidable presence can often leave them completely powerless. If only deer could understand irony. Number four, chicken feathers. You might be asking yourself right now, how can chicken feathers possibly be dangerous to chickens? They're there to serve a protective purpose after all, right? As it turns out, as much as feathers protect chickens, they can also cause them a lot of pain and possibly death. I can't believe I'm about to put the words chickens and cannibalism in the same sentence, but I am. Chicken cannibalism is a real thing. Chickens are prone to picking on other chickens who seem more vulnerable. And you know what makes them especially vulnerable? Lack of feathers. This lack of feathers can happen for many reasons, but the most common ones are feather loss and possible bald spots, which are most commonly associated with stress. Wait, chickens get stressed out? If left untreated, this condition can lead to picking and possibly spread to the rest of the flock, which can degenerate into an unending chicken picking and chicken cannibalism. And as we've already established, chickens can be cannibals. And as cute as they may appear, their ruthless picking directed toward other vulnerable chicken affected by feather loss and bald spots can spiral into a merciless taunting of the poor chicken afflicted by his condition. According to chicken experts, I guess, the solution to this problem is an understanding the molting pattern in flock members. Molting is a natural regular shedding of old feathers and growth of new ones. This understanding can help the owner of the flock to avoid unnecessary picking during the molting process. I say it's the least we can do to protect our feathery friends. Number three, snake tail. Does the thought of a snake eating itself sound terrifying or weird? Ouroboros is the symbol depicting a snake or sometimes a dragon eating its own tail, which represents the wholeness and infinity of the cycle of life. Some of us may have even considered getting a tattoo of this, but after finding out about the practice of some snakes eating themselves by first ingesting their own tails, I must say, reconsider that tattoo. 
So how does this bizarre thing even occur? Snakes are cold-blooded creatures, which translates into their inability to regulate their own body temperatures. They need external sources of warmth, such as the sun or an artificial source, such as heat lamps. However, sometimes they get too warm, and since they're not able to cool their body temperature down through sweat, they often look for shelters in cool, shady places. When a snake senses too much heat without a cool shelter in sight, it becomes disoriented and confused. It also starts feeling a strong sense of false hunger due to its ramped up metabolism and is prepared to gobble up anything that looks remotely yummy. And sometimes without immediate availability of their usual food choices, they start eating themselves or self-cannibalizing. What usually happens is that they start eating their own tails and then work their way up their bodies. Yikes. In some cases with pet snakes, this practice may be prevented with the help of a veterinarian by turning off the heat lamps and spritzing the snake's body with cold water, which can help alleviate the snake's stress. Number two, our golly sheep horns. Yep, we've got another sheep on this list, but this time it's the wild mountain kind. Our golly sheep is the world's largest sheep with sizes of up to 3.2 feet in height and up to hundreds of kilograms in weight. They're usually found wandering in the highlands of Western East Asia, the Himalayas, Tibet, and the Altai Mountains. These are truly stunning and majestic creatures, but as majestic as they might be, their fate can actually be pretty tragic. Our golly sheep are well known for their beautiful, albeit terrifying, looking spiral horns. It's usually easy to differentiate between a male and a female argali. Males have much larger horns, while they are usually smaller and sometimes even completely absent in their female counterparts. Male argali are also larger than the female specimens. As you might have guessed, the male argali sheep use their horns to compete with each other. No surprise there. What is surprising, ironic and kind of tragic is the fact that the same horns they use to compete and defend themselves can become the cause of their own demise. As our golly sheep gets older, their horns grow in the direction of their cheeks and can actually end up piercing through their skulls, which often results in fatal injuries when it happens. Too bad their unique beauty can be detrimental to their health and eventually their lives. Beauty really is sometimes a killer. Number one, Babarusa teeth. Definitely one of the more bizarre creatures, Babarusa earned the number one spot on this list of animals with body parts that can kill them. Sometimes referred to as a deer pig, the Babarusa is a wild animal that is sometimes humorously called a wild pig with a dental problem. Well, you know how sometimes even dental problems can prove to be deadly? Babarusa species know that better than anyone. Babarusa's tusks or canine teeth have become very popular among wildlife lovers and admirers for the sheer bizarre effect of the way they look. These tusks can grow through the skin in their snout and can curve back toward their forehead. And did I mention that these sharp upward growing teeth that can curve back to the head can actually kill a Babarusa in an instant? The real reason for the way their teeth grow the way that they do is actually a mystery. The main hypothesis is that the Babarusa grow their teeth in a way to impress their female counterparts and to be able to outcompete each other for those females and for survival. It's likely that these weirdly shaped tusks have served some kind of evolutionary purpose, natural and or sexual selection, but it's weird to believe that such incredibly monstrous tusks have evolved to engage in courtship and to survive, just with the added probability that they themselves might get impaled by their own teeth and eventually lose the battle. If there ever was an animal that could inspire both admiration for its oddity and its chill-inducing presentation that could prove to be lethal even to themselves, the Babarusa would win that battle every day. Thanks for watching. What do you think of these animals with body parts that can kill them? Do you know any other animals that should be on this list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.